Anyway, they're not having a crop this year. Oh, that's too bad. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, the, they're saying all the smoke is affects the the grapes that they absorb that smell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But I bet the yeah. ash will make good fertilizer for next year. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. <clears throat> so does you that have mean to more French wine, right, Andrew? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean the? The wine that's produced this year, the, the price will go up because of the rarity, or is that probably? Works? I would yeah. think, or, or it'll go down because it's not it's any. Good. Heard they're not oh. even going to make any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're just throwing the grapes away. Oh my yeah, God. yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> ah, this year you drink beer instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Oregon was affected too, right? So I mean, yeah. I guess they're in the same boat. Wow. So I, is, I think the fire's still burning, isn't it, up in um, Northern California? Is it? Yeah, I heard that they, it won't be contained completely before October 20th, they announced. Oh. So it's a whole month to contain this huge fire in Northern Napa. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> Hi, Nicole. Hi, Aaron. How are all of you? Good. How are you? Great. Thank Great. you so much. How's Teddy doing? <clears throat> doing well. Thank you very much. And Ariana may pop her head in in a second, too. You never know. Very okay. excited. All right. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Hi Jesse. Aaron. Okay, we'll get started in about seven minutes. Hey, Greg. Hey, Andrew. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah. Great, thanks. <laughs> oh, look. Aww. I'm Nicole. Greg, oh. Hi. <laughs> Boy, they start those rotary members young now, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Denise. Hi, Aaron, how are you? Good, how are you? Hi, 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 Denise. Hi, good to see you. Hi, Greg. Did you get my text? Hi, Denise. No. Oh, no, different Greg, Greg Jones. Okay. I did. I haven't responded yet. I need to check with the boss. Okay, you're busy. I understand. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, you know, we're going in different directions. I'll, I'll get back to you today. Cheers. Hi, Gilda. Hi, Gilda. I made it. Okay, thank you. I'll let me make you co-host. This is better than Romper Room. Yeah. <laughs> so are we busy bees? Doobie, we're doobies. Doobie, oh yes, doobies. that's right. I, that's good. I see Andrew. <laughs> you need to hold up your little mirror or yeah, looking look glass. <laughs> you're too young to know that, Aaron. No, that was my favorite show. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was around when I was a kid. They always Shows advertise that. their products at a store that was too far away for my mom to go to. It was so disappointing. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Devin. Uh, Hi, Calvin. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi, Molly. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Molly. Hi. You look beautiful in your picture. <clears throat> Why, thank you. Now I will show the real me. Okay, let's see. <laughs> wow, oh, as beautiful. How do you explain <laughs> yourself? <laughs> oh, Nicole, you're wonderful. <laughs> you too. She even has a halo. <laughs> well, let me turn on my light. I have a, a, a rim light that. There we go. Oh, yes, very nice. <laughs> Your supermodel light. <laughs> I have different... Okay, that's better, isn't it? Very nice. I'm ready for a close up now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was being viewed by so many people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get started in about four minutes, folks. There's not as much sunlight is coming. Well, nice. What's it like to be you, Molly? <laughs> <laughs> I 
fun, <laughs> exuberant, exciting. That's right. At least I, I try to make myself think that. That's good. You believe it. It's true. But what is it like to be with, like you, Nicole? Oh my God, what a delight. <laughs> it's so exciting and wonderful. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> Hello, Daryl. All right. You? I know that's why I love Rotary so much, just to be with you all. Aww. You are all delightful. Flattery will get you everywhere. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Denise, how's school? Uh, quite busy. This is the end of the quarter. Wow. And we, here, you got to count your blessings, right? Right. We haven't had any children that we've had to attend a funeral for, have we? Mm. And I look at that and I go, that's really, really good because I've had a child before in a previous district who passed away and that is gut-wrenching. So there have been, you know, I have a, a remarkable team. Mr. Tapalian down there in my lower left-hand corner has been a super supporter for me. Mm -hmm. And he, he talks me off ledges and returns my texts and see him smiling he, and he's chewing with his, with his lips together, just like I would teach anybody. So <laughs> uh, very nice. Thank you, Mr. T. Mr. Kurt. Gotta get lunch, gotta get lunch in when I can. Yep, I drink it. I drink my lunch, but this is protein. Trust me, it's really protein. Mm. Mr. Kurtenbach is always there returning my emails. So it's it's good. Wonderful. Is, is Mr. T a mathlete or an athlete? Depends on what day. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Hello, Shodi. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Yeah. Calvin, where are you going? Try, trying to get back to office now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can <laughs> sit in. Actually, eating, so. Gilda, I signed in. Oh, Thank yeah. you. If you see the sign in in the chat, please sign in. Yes, and Rotarians. Thank you. Remind me, how do you do that? So you go to your chat. Where are we? At the bottom, if you open, if it looks like you're an iPad. I don't know how the iPads work. Do you know, Aaron? <clears throat> um. Yeah, wherever your chat is, uh, I, I, I've never um, joined Zoom on an iPad, but um, wherever your chat is, if you open that and just click on the link, I should open up the page and all you have to do is just sign your name. I don't see the link, you know, I, I don't think the link is there today. Oh, uh, I let see me the link. It, it was there uh, last week, yeah. Last yeah, let me one, read yeah, send it one more time. It's in there. Okay, I can see it. Do you guys see it now? Yeah, I see it. That's Hello, so Ariana. Hi. How Welcome. are you? Good. How are you? Great. Hi, Rotarian. Good to see you. Good to see you. I can't wait <laughs> to see you guys IRL, which right. means in real life. Okay. <laughs> okay, folks, let's get started. Hmm. As we remember, the October, that October is Economic and Community Development Month in the Rotary world. I call the October 8th, 2020 meeting of the Rotary Club of San Marino to order. We are truly a club that makes, makes, a, makes a difference. difference. Makes, makes a difference. Thank you. Please stand and join me in reciting the four way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? The truth. <laughs> Second. Is it fair? Is it fair? Third. Will it build will goodwill and better friendships? Fourth. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Please remain standing. And today we are led um, for the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation by uh, Denise Wadsworth. All right, everybody, please stand, put your right hand over your heart, 
and join me in pledging this beautiful flag and nation of ours. I pledge allegiance and please remain standing. Um, this is the motivation that I sent each of you with while I was president. Every week I closed with this, and so I open with it today. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold fast to what is good, return no one evil for evil. I'll be out to bed later. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you very much, Denise. That was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, introduction of guests. I believe we have one guest today. Um, yes, we only, well, we have our, our speaker, Greg Jones, will be talking later, but Mary Lou Byrne, you're our uh, assistant district governor, I understand. So welcome, pleasure to have you. I know you're just down the street in Pasadena, right? <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. It's great to see you. I see a lot of familiar faces. It's great to be here. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome, Mary Lou. Okay. Um, now, what we'll do is please raise your polio pig envelopes and raise your contributions and place them in the envelope. Thank you so much for participating, everyone. Thank you for participating week in and week out. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to get together in person and count the money and see how much we got for um, polio. Okay. All right. Uh, amazingly, no birthdays this week. Um, member anniversaries. Calvin Lowe is on the call. As of October 9th, tomorrow will be a, a Rotarian for six years. Congratulations, Calvin. Oh, thank Everyone you. Give him a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, wedding anniversaries. Andrew Barth and Avery Barth uh, are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. They are, they've been married for 32 years. So if you see them, please congratulate them. Okay, moving on to announcements. Well, our first announcement, uh, Greg, are you ready? Okay, our first announcement is from Greg Johansson. Hello, everybody. Sorry, pardon the background noise from this guy. Um, so uh, we, we got, I got a link the other day from uh, the district and our club's uh, Rotary Citation with Platinum Distinction has been officially awarded. So thanks to everybody last year for your incredible work and efforts. Um, this is one of several awards we got, but makes me really proud. I know it's going to be overshadowed by all the accomplishments President Gill gets done and uh, in the club this year, but it was, it was fun to do it. So thank you all. You should be proud. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Greg. And can you um, remind us of um, why, why are we receiving this recognition? Why we get platinum distinction? I don't know. Uh, maybe Governor Jones could uh, share that. But um, each year before the, like you know, you set goals mm -hmm. and you have to identify 13 to 25 goals. And I think we hit all of our goals as a club with, with ease, even though it was kind of cut in half. So, because our club works hard, we do good. Great. Great job, Greg, and great job to all Rotarians. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, next, Gilda, the survey. Okay. Um, so a few weeks ago, we, I sent out a survey. It came in P-mail. Hopefully you all received it. Um, not everybody has replied. I only have 28 responses. And so I'm wondering if you all received it, but if you haven't, I will send it out again. Will you guys put a sticky or a reminder somewhere that I got to fill out that survey? And I'll tell you why. The purpose of that survey is to find out why are not everybody showing up on this platform, right? We have, I don't know if you've noticed, so today, 24 people, not bad, but typically when we met in person, it was 65 people, right? So we wanna increase attendance, number one. Number two, we gotta figure out what are the projects that you guys are doing 
that maybe if you're not here, if we don't know about it, we wanna know about it so that we can help in that project, right? And then if you remember, we had talked about putting on some social gatherings in the Zoom format, like a cooking class with Stephanie Johnson, I can't wait, or an art class or a wine class or a beer night, I don't know, a cigar night over Zoom. Well, we need your ideas. We gotta hear from you. So please, will everybody raise your right hand. Please promise that you will fill out that survey. You guys promise me? I already did it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Gilda. Okay, uh, Denise, you have an announcement about World Polio Day? Sure. Uh, we have our walk. We are going to sponsor, and it's just a simple walk on World Polio Day. Please mark your calendar for October 24th. That's a Saturday. It's just two hours. You can bring your dogs because we're meeting at the Huntington Middle School parking lot and we're just doing a one mile loop around my dear school, up West Drive, back behind our school on Sherwood, go past our meeting place at San Marino Community Church and back around to the, um, our parking area. We kind of like, we'd like to have, um, our Interact Clubs are gonna join us. We'd like to have an ice cream truck but the ice cream truck is six hundred dollars for one hundred fifty servings. We think that our interact clubs can help support one third and one third, and we're hoping that maybe some Rotarians would pop in some money for an ice cream for the ice cream, and then we can enjoy that as well, just like we had at Foothill Unity for our food drive. If you're interested in helping us support that, please message me. I'll put my email in the in the uh, chat. And I'll throw so, in fifty bucks, Denise. Hey, thank you, thank you, Greg. That's much appreciated. They make really good ice cream sandwiches. I love them. So um, that's for World Polio Day, 4 to 6 p.m., October 24th. Dogs, pets, children, aliens, all welcome. Thanks. Denise, Thank I'll throw in 50 bucks as well. Thank you, Gilda. Beautiful. Okay. And Denise, I, I would like to contribute $50 as well. Thank wow. you, Jonathan. Wow. Okay. Denise, um, I go for it too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fari. Well, so, wow, is that 200 already? That's getting us there, yeah. Awesome. Wow. I'll match their donations, so $200. I'll match 200 Wow. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, and um, Mary Lou just put a message in the chat. chat. Um, Denise, maybe the Pasadena Club might be interested in partnering. I hope you would love, I would love for you to come over because I haven't yeah. talked to you yet. I mean, I would love to, uh, they ha I know they have a board meeting tonight. So you might want to talk to Ken Joe and see if they're interested. Um, I can, I'll, ho I'll hook you up. I'll send an email to both of you. Okay, thanks. Because we were, uh, we were going to reach out to South Pasadena and to Alhambra because there are, Alhambra has sponsored us. So then it's like one big happy family and yeah. a simple event, but with good ice cream and we'll have We'll have, you know, kids and dogs and, and aliens. So I, I'll include myself in the alien part, right, Greg? Yes. I, okay. <laughs> All right, that's great. Thank you, Mary Lou. Great job, Denise. Okay, um, I have one announcement and it's regarding the uh, pledge and invocation. I'm sending a link here, if you can all uh, pick a date, uh, especially for October, we need to fill up those October dates and um, just simply type in your name next to the date that's available. Um, all you have to do is say the Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation as Denise so beautifully did today. So please pick a date. Um, do we have any more announcements? If so, please raise your hand. Today's a short day on announcements. Uh, Denise, please. The Peace Conference. That's right. Mm -hmm. The Peace Conference is also on the morning, just like Greg Jones said, we're gonna sit on our keisters in the morning for the peace conference. And so we're gonna move in the afternoon to, and so the peace conference is online district5300.org. And we have some wonderful speakers for this. Thanks. Yes. Saturday, October 24 is nine to one. It's free, it's virtual. And our um, own Mike Dreeby is the MC on that date. Okay.
Okay, next week for our program, we have Dr. William Covino on building a community of education. And thank you to Linda Waugh and the Programs Committee for bringing that program to our club. And um, now what I'm gonna do is just give me one quick, quick second. I think my link fell off. All right, folks, just one second. Okay, I'm gonna introduce our speaker. Our speaker today is D District Governor Greg Jones. Greg grew up in Southern Illinois where he met his wife, Brenda, in high school. Both graduated from the University of Illinois with Greg earning a BS in accountancy and Brenda a BS in elementary education. They moved to Southern California in 1985 and to Pasadena in 1991. Greg was a partner in a national accounting firm for 29 years. Along the way, he earned an MS in taxation and an MS in financial planning. In 2010, he started his own CPA and wealth management practices in Pasadena. Greg has been involved, very involved with the Pasadena community. He has a total of 22 years of service on the City of Pasadena Commission. During that time, he was a member of the Recreation and Parks Commission, the Hahamanga Operation, Operating Company, the Library Commission, the Rose Bowl Operating Company, the Planning Commission, and the Board of Zoning Appeals. He's helped found the Hastings Associate, a support group for Hastings Ranch Library in Pasadena. He has been a board member of Hastings Associates, the Friends of Pasadena Public Library, the Pasadena Recreation and Parks Foundation, and Pasadena Beautiful. In addition, Greg has served on many task forces and committees in Pasadena community. Greg became a member of Pasadena Tournament of Roses in 1998 and has served on many of its committees, including five years as committee vice chair. Greg joined the Rotary Club of Pasadena Sunrise in 1997. He has served as club president twice and has held almost all club officer positions over the last 20 years. That club uh, changed to evening meetings several years ago and is now the Rotary Club of Pasadena after hours. Greg began his District 30, 5300 service on the PRLS committee in 2005 and was chair of that committee in 2006 through 2007. He served as assistant governor for two years. He was the first district foundation committee chair for four years and has served on several, different, several district foundation subcommittees. He has been awarded the District Foundation Service Award two times he participated in the Corazon Superbuild project, traveled to India twice, and participated in NIDs to Mexico and part of, part of a wheelchair foundation, wheelchair distribution, and to Liberia and Peru on Bodoplast mission. Greg is currently serving his third year as district treasurer. Okay, we know that he is super qualified. His bio is a lot longer than that. Um, please, everyone, give a round of applause to Greg Jones. Thank you so much, Greg, for visiting us today. Welcome. Well, thank you, Aaron. I, I, I guess one thing I need to get done is I need to uh, develop a much shorter bio. I think it's it's a little too much, but uh, but thanks for that. Um, and it's it's always good to be here uh, visiting with the San Marino Club. Um, this is one of the clubs that, that when I visit, I always come away super enthused because it, this is a club that gets it. Um, you you know you're you're making a difference in, in your community and you're making a difference around the world. And and I just Every time I come away, I say, that's really what Rotary is all about. That's what San Marino is doing. So, so happy to, to be here and, and have a chance to, to speak with you all. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our, our theme for this year. You can see, oh, I have to get everything's backwards. The Rotary Opens Opportunities here behind me is our theme this year. I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. Um, I, I first heard that theme um, at what we call our International Assembly. That's where they bring all the district governors from around the world together uh, for a training in January. And so January this year, down in San Diego, Holger Kanak, who's now our, our Rotary International President, unveiled this theme. And when I heard it, I thought, well, that sounds like a pretty appropriate Rotary theme, because I know in my own life, Rotary's opened a lot of opportunities. I'm a, I'm a CPA, uh, and I'm, I'm the prototypical CPA that's just happy as anything to sit in my office all day, working on tax returns, you know, working on people's numbers. Uh, I, I have the perfect personality type for this uh, COVID lockdown because I'm just happy kind of um, being by myself all day. I'm that introverted. 
But the opportunities that Rotary opened for me personally was it got me out of, of my comfort zone. Um, it gave me a chance to meet other people in our club and in our district and in our community that I would not have had otherwise. Um, you know, like I've, I've got a few friends here in, in this club and it seems like every club I visit, I, I say, well, there's a few friends there. Um, and, and that's really nice. That's the opportunity I think it opened. Plus when you heard uh, Aaron read that bio that um, I, you know, I've had the chance to go to India twice, to, to Mexico several times on different projects, to Peru, to Liberia. Those are opportunities I never would have had without Rotary. Uh, and, and that really, um, it literally opened the world to me was seeing what the rest of the world was like. And I'll mention that a little bit later. But so without a doubt, Rotary Open's opportunity was, was a very apt theme. And then not long after we came home from the International Assembly, that's when the COVID uh, hit uh, and, and, and everything shut down um, and, and really our world just changed dramatically overnight. And that's when I realized just how perfect this theme of Rotary Opens Opportunities was for these times. Uh, because now um, in this new uh, post-COVID world that we're dealing with, I think we can look at the opportunities that Rotary opens. You know, it opens opportunities for our clubs. Even a, a, a high functioning club like the San Marino Club uh, has an opportunity to kind of re-look at its brand. Um, I love that you do have a brand, that, that you're the club that makes a difference. That, that's a great brand to have. Um, but this is a chance to, to take a look at what that brand means to the San Marino community and see if there are ways that, that this is when you need to, to tweak things. Um, Rotary, one of our big problems seems to be we have a mentality of that's not the way we've always done things. Well, now with, with what the situation we're in now, everything we've done in the past is kind of out the window. And so now you can take a, a look as a club and say, are we doing now in this time of, of COVID in a time of, of shutdowns when so many businesses are hurting so badly, um, our, our students are, are being challenged. You know, I, I, I can't imagine being a student and not having face-to-face -face contact with my peers. That's such an important part of growing up. Um, so everybody's being challenged in these times. Our, our medical workers that have put their lives on their line are, you know, the, the second line essential people, you know, the people that kept us uh, fed by, by going to, to Rouse and Vons and those things every day. Um, those people need our help. And so one thing I'd want to ask the San Marino Club to do is, is take a, a hard look at what you've been doing in the past uh, so successfully without a doubt and see if you do need to make changes. Uh, I know that you probably have added some, some new projects this year, but this is, a, this is a time when we need to respond to the, what the community needs. Uh, we need to say um, we, can, we can help and we're there and, and it's, it's a huge opportunity for Rotary to be there. So, so take a look at that. Um, and and I, I don't know what that would be in your community. It seems like every community is a little bit different. So I talked to some communities where the need was really, there was a lot of people without food. Uh, I, I was visiting with the uh, um, Lancaster Sunrise Club this morning and, and they found their need really wasn't a food shortage, but it was all these children that are stuck at home um, need a way to make themselves occupied without being on a screen. And so they were working on that. So every community has different needs. And so I just hope that you and San Marino can look for that. And then we, we need to think about the opportunity that Rotary opens to us as individual Rotarians. Um, something that we've talked a lot about in, in our training this year as, as district governors is something called our Rotary Why. Um, it's why we joined Rotary. We know from, from all the surveying and, and, and things like that that Rotary's done why people are joining. We know that most people are joining for the community service aspect. We know that people are joining for the fellowship aspect, uh, for business networking perhaps, uh, for international projects. Um, but the, the problem is that I think people join with a, with a why in mind. They're joining because they're looking for something and unfortunately, oftentimes they're not finding it. Um, I joined Rotary in 1997. In 1997, Rotary had 1.2 million members. Today, if you look it up, Rotary has 1.2 million members. Um, but in that intervening 20 plus years, there has been over 2 million people have joined Rotary and 2 million people have left Rotary. 
And I really think it's because people join our clubs looking for something specific and they don't find it. And so when they don't find it, they just end up fading away. Um, and so I think we as individuals have a responsibility to, to really look hard and find our whys. I know you've inducted a lot of new members this year because Guild has been kind enough to invite me to those meetings and those people especially. Uh, you've joined this club for a reason, um, but don't just sit back and be passive participants in the Rotary experience. Uh, we all need to be proactive. We need to be in charge of our own Rotary destinies. If we joined this Rotary Club in San Marino for a reason, and we're not finding ourselves engaged with that reason, then what we need to do is we need to go to Aaron, we need to go to the rest of the board and say, I joined the San Marino Rotary because I really have a passion to do this, whatever this is. You know, maybe it's working with elementary school children, maybe it's working with the homeless population, maybe it's promoting my business, whatever the reason is, if you're not finding that, then reach out and ask for help in finding that. Uh, we have a term in Rotary that we call a Rotary moment. Uh, that's when you something clicks in whatever project you're doing. You know, someone uh, that you're serving in a project comes up and thanks you. Um, you. You look somebody in the eye and you can see how much what you've done has impacted their life. Uh, that's a Rotary moment and that's what makes us keep wanting to come back. If you're not finding yourself having a rotary moment, and it's so hard now in a virtual world where we don't get to have as many of those um, hands-on person-to-person contacts, it's so much harder. Uh, but I think, I think it's our responsibility as Rotarians to go out and find that. And that applies to the, to the more seasoned Rotarians as, as much to the new ones. You know, even someone that's been around for 20 years like me, I need to keep uh, myself excited about what Rotary does. So even though I've had countless Rotary moments over my lifetime, uh, I still need to find new ones to keep myself charged up. And I'm challenging all of you that are more seasoned Rotarians to do the same thing. Um, keep, keep your excitement up. And that, that concept of the Rotary why, I think there's a, a flip side to it. Because to me, every time someone joins a Rotary club, there's an implicit contract that's formed between the Rotarian and the club. The Rotarian is joining the club because they're looking for something. And the club has a responsibility, I think, to help the person find that. Um, and this is a challenge, a big challenge for your club because you have over 100 members. But one thing I'm challenging our clubs to do this year is to work hard to understand the whys of all the members of your club. Uh, and, and maybe it's, it's one person's not going to be able to do that, obviously, with a club with over 100 members, but maybe you can form teams where those teams can, can learn about each other and find those whys. But I think if we put some serious effort into finding out what the motivation is for all of our members, why they're in our Rotary Club, and we help them find that motivation, we help them have a Rotary moment, then I think what we're going to have is we're going to have engaged members and excited members and members that want to share their rotary story with their friends and their associates and, and build more Rotarians. And it's going to make a better San Marino club. Um, so I think that's, that's a challenge I'll, I'll give to Aaron and, and all you that are on the call today. Um, find out the whys of some of the other people in your club uh, and then help them with that. A really important thing, and I think it's something that, that we got away from in Rotary a little bit. I think that um, we sometimes feel that that just everybody should have this organic experience through our community service, uh, but not everybody is going to be triggered the same way that, that each of us will be. Uh, I know the things that excite me aren't going to be necessarily the same thing that excites uh, the other Greg here on the call, uh, but, but we each need to have a chance to find that. So, so work on that, and if you do, I think it'll make your club better. Another opportunity we have is in, is in our foundation. Um, I, I love our foundation. I, I think our foundation is what makes our organization unique uh, because it's a ground up organization. Uh, that means the, all the, the direction in our foundation comes from us as members. We don't have a board sitting out there telling us what we need to do. We're the ones that, that fill out uh, grant applications and ask for money, and we're the ones that, that create the momentum that Rotary has. You know, even a project like our, our signature cause of eradicating polio 
came from an idea out of one Rotarian and one club that went to the Philippines and started vaccinating people in the Philippines against the polio virus. And they saw how well that went and they just kept expanding it until we as Rotarians went to the World Health Organization and said, we think we can eradicate this disease. And they kind of tried to laugh us out of the room to say, you can't do that. But we persisted and, and now we're almost there. Um, but we have a challenge um, right now in the Rotary Foundation. Uh, I'm sure John's explained to you how, how our foundation funding works over time, uh, but it's something a lot of people don't understand. Our foundation, um, the main fund, the annual programs fund, the one that, that funds our projects, was set up so that we would spend all the money that we raised there. We also have an endowment fund, so we do have a fund that's, that's out there into perpetuity that just generates interest and dividends and we spend those. But the main program fund of Rotary, uh, what we do is we collect money and then three years later, our goal is to spend that money. Well, in the past, we never did that. In the past, we always had trouble spending that money and we were always carrying balances in the district accounts and then in the Rotary account, the Rotary World Fund, because we never did spend the money. But last year for the first year, our, our applications for grant money actually exceeded what it is that we collected. Um, and we ran out of money. We, we had uh, projects we couldn't fund. Bill, as chair of our uh, uh, Global Scholar Committee, ran into that because uh, he helped submit some applications that Rotary said, well, we can't uh, process those now because we don't have money to fund them right now. And that same thing is going to happen again this year uh, because we're just a victim of our own success. And so what that tells me is that we need to redouble our efforts to, to keep giving to the Rotary Foundation. And the San Marino Club is, is one of the best at that. I think your per capita giving, your per person giving in your club is always in excess of $200, close to $300. I think actually last year, you probably uh, average um, contribution was over $300 a person. And that's phenomenal. But just, we need to keep that up. Even in a time like this, when, when giving might be a little bit painful and, and people are a little bit uncertain, we need to keep funding our foundation because we wanna keep doing these international projects that we've done. We need to keep sending out these global scholars that Bill's committee helps us with. It's so important to do. And so I just ask you to think about that. There's a concept called making Rotary Foundation your charity of choice. A lot of people are asking you for money, but I, I think the best deal in town is our Rotary Foundation to give to that. Uh, I did mention the polio cause. Um, that, that when we started uh, eradicating polio in 1985, there was 350,000 cases of polio a year. Uh, and it was a debilitating disease for many. I know my father had polio. Uh, I grew up as a child hearing stories about what it was like for my father to be in an iron lung. Uh, actually, it was kind of uh, funny on a phone call this last weekend when I was speaking with my parents, he brought up the iron lung again, you know, just out of the blue, we were talking about something else and he talked about uh, one of the uncomfortable experiences he had in an iron lung. So that was always a part of my childhood was, was knowing the effects that polio had on people. And I'm so happy we're working on eradicating it. We're down to about 100 cases a year, uh, just in that Afghanistan, Pakistan border area. Uh, that's that's uh, kind of the last holdout. I think you all saw the news that last month we eradicated polio, the wild virus, the, the wild polio virus from Africa. Um, and so now the only place that's, that's left in the wild form is in Southeast Asia. And we're so close to getting that done. Um, and, and, and it's hard. I, I'm, I'm so happy to see that you guys are doing uh, this, this walk on the 24th because a lot of people in this country have no conception of what polio is and what it did to people. They can't remember the lines of people waiting to get their polio vaccinations. Uh, it's very reminiscent of what we're going through now. The terror that people had, I, I think you've probably seen the signs about you know, you know, staying out of certain towns because polio was there and, and people wouldn't go to the swimming pools and, and really isolated themselves back in the 50s and 60s. So uh, we're kind of uh, in a deja vu period again. A cool thing about our, our, our polio effort, an opportunity we had was that, that when COVID hit, they couldn't do the house-to-house -house immunizations in Southeast Asia and Africa like they had been doing. And so what they did is they took our polio infrastructure and they turned it around to be working on uh, coronavirus contact, contract tracing and data gathering uh, and helping 
uh, deal with the coronavirus in these countries. It's probably something if we had that infra infrastructure here in the US, we probably would have been a little bit better off, but we did take that uh, infrastructure we built up. And for any of you that's been in an NID, you've seen the huge effort that goes on and the hundreds of thousands of people that are working on that on one day. And that infrastructure can be used for, for good for that. Um, I've seen now that, that they're actually flipping back to now where they're starting to do the polio vaccinations again. So we do hope we can eradicate it soon, uh, but we need to keep that up. Let me just finish by uh, again, thanking your club for being you know, really one of the, 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 the model rotary clubs. If, if, if we were to, to, to say, what should a rotary club look like? I think the San Marino club would be one of those that we'd say, do what they're doing and you're gonna be successful. Uh, and so thanks for that. Thanks for all the, the effort you're making in your community and around the world. And I wanna thank your, your club for being uh, such a supporter of the district. When I look at some of the faces here, I'm not seeing a lot of faces because we've got the, the, the thing on, but, but your club, a lot of the top leadership of our district comes out of the San Reno Club. I see Chris Datweiler there. You know, Chris uh, for years has been our go-to guy, you know, keeping people informed through our website. And, and he's just an invaluable person on our management team that's helped us so much. Gilda, uh, who I think must be your membership chair is also the district membership chair. Uh, and, is, uh, and really has an infectious enthusiasm uh, for membership that I just love so much. Um, I think uh, Aaron mentioned Michael Dreeby. Michael was our foundation chair for several years and is still on our foundation. Uh, our, it's what we call, I, I want to say audit committee, stewardship committee. He's, he chairs our stewardship committee and it's going to help us with our district conference if we're able to have a, a district conference. You've got Isaac there that was uh, an assistant governor and still helps uh, with our district grants. Uh, Bill Payne, who I mentioned before, uh, Bill Payne is, is the reason why this district does global grant scholarships. Uh, without Bill, we just wouldn't be able to do it because he has so much knowledge and so much passion that we thank him for that. Uh, Jenny Sow, who's our uh, four-way speech contest that, that we're getting that ramped up and getting ready to go. And then finally, Denise Wadsworth that so long has been a leader for our youth in our, our district. You know, I'll admit to a mistake I made this year. A big mistake I had was not asking Denise to be our youth leader this year. And that's gonna be probably one of the regrets I'm gonna have as district governor because that passion, you can't, you can't get that passion anywhere else. That, that's a woman that lives for, for our youth. And I really love that about her. Um, so um, thank you again for having me. I think, I don't know, Aaron, we probably have a couple minutes for questions. Yes, so if somebody has a question, uh, go ahead and, and uh, let it fly and we'll see if we can answer it. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, mm -hmm. Denise. Here we go. Um, I had one, Greg, because I don't think I've got this clear because I chaired foundation in the club last year, but do we still have matching grants available for next year or have the donations declined so that we don't have that available? So are you talking matching grants for, for global projects? Um, both at the district and at the glo and for the sure the, the district we do uh, the district uh, we we do have district grants the way this district deals with district grants uh, basically that money that we give to the annual program fund comes back to our district in that third year and what we do in this district is they say that fifty percent of that money we can give to clubs and we just parcel that out and give every club their share of that money let's see San Marino had $10,782 available this year. I didn't check before I got on. I guess I usually do that. I should have. But Aaron or somebody can probably tell you it, what, what they've applied for this year. So district grant money, that's there. And it, it's actually more this year than what we had last year because we had a good fundraising year three years ago. Uh, but San Marino had about uh, $10,700 to spend in district grants. The world, um, um, the global grants, um, we still have money. The last time I checked, there was $80,000 available to do the matches, um, but we think that's going to go pretty quickly. Uh, and I know since I looked, I have seen three or four projects come through. So now I know it's less than 80. My guess is it's probably closer to $60,000 left, but we'll run out for sure. And so if, if San Marino is going to do some projects this year, it, that money gets allocated first come, first serve. And Rotary does that. We don't really have any say about it, but it's whoever gets their application approved first gets the money. Uh, and then after all the money's gone, then the money's just gone. And what you do is your project goes into kind of a parking lot 
until more money is available the next year. Does that answer your question, Denise? Thanks. Thank you, Denise. Anybody else? We have any more questions? John, John has a question, I see. Uh, yeah, Greg, I'll just mention that we have uh, at the district level now, $10,790 worth of DDF grants for your approval, okay. plus $1,000 for the second round. Oh, okay, great. Uh, the, all of that's in, so we have $11,790. Okay, added. great. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Gilda. I just had a question about the platinum recognition. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I'm not quite sure because that would have come in from, uh, from Luann's year. But it was how many um, how many of your goals you met? And last year, I think there was like, I thought there was 15 goals last year. There's 20 this year. And I think if you met all 15, you got platinum is my, my understanding. There's platinum, there's gold, and there's silver. So platinum was the highest recognition level. And, and I think that what that means is that you hit 100% of your goals. No, I can, I can speak to that because that was my year. I was okay. the president my club that year so yeah it, and the goals are in various categories so it was membership and it and a lot of the emphasis was on having a lot of members participate in various activities so it was like we're going to do a service project and we think we're going to have this many members participate and um so that's what that's all about so again platinum is the highest so way to go Thank you, Mary Lou. Do we have more questions for District Governor? Let me check on page two. Of Denise? No. Do you think that we're going to be in Taiwan this year? Because I was with Richard Sun for a dinner Saturday night, and he's like, let's get a group of educators to go over. I, I think that we've had, I'm trying to think, there's 36 people from the district, I think, have registered for Taiwan. They have not yet decided. I know at the October board meeting, the Rotary board meeting, they're going to be deciding about next year's International Assembly, which would come in February of 2021. So that's the next big thing in the Rotary world. And that's what they're talking about in October. My guess is, you know, they'll deal with that first and then they'll get around to the convention. And they'll probably have to make a decision on the convention, say, January or so. The problem is the situation on the ground changes so much, and there's just so little we really do know about this coronavirus, you know, whatever we are, eight or nine months in. Um, I, I just think it's really hard for them. I'm in the same position on our district conference. I, I kind of made a, a side comment about that earlier. Our district conference is set for May 22nd in, uh, in uh, Antelope Valley, at the Antelope Valley College. Well, Antelope Valley College is closed and they're not going to be open then. Uh, and so we have to make a decision at some point, are we going to try to do a live event? Um, and and it's, it's a real hard thing to plan because as I've talked to people, I, I've met with a lot of the PDGs over the last couple of weeks for di different things. And a lot of the feedback I'm getting from them is don't even try to plan one because so many people are going to be afraid to come. So who knows? It's, it's, it's hard to plan those things out. I, I am glad I'm not on the International Convention Committee because they're, they have to make a decision way ahead because there's so many things involved. Um, well, but right now they're planning on going live. That's, that's the plan. Well, otherwise, I look forward to all of us going down to Houston in 2022. It's a yes. flight over. For sure, for sure. Well, I think we'll see each other in Houston. Houston in 2022. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Denise. Do we have any other questions? Okay, I believe those are all our questions. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so uh, much. Glad Greg. to see you again. And, and Aaron, invite me back sometime. Always happy to come back and see I you. I know again. you've always been willing. We really, really appreciate that. And yep. I want to publicly thank you for your guidance throughout this past year. Um, both, both Greg and Mary Lou, thank you so much for continuing to hold meetings and keep us on track and to kind of guide us to this path. Thank you, Greg. Um, we will be donating a book on your behalf to the Coral Public Library. Cool. Folks, please don't forget next week our program is we have Dr. William Corvino on the building community, building a community of education. Rotarians and guests, thank you so much for joining us today. I see it's really early. And you know, thank you so much. Um, Mary Lou, thank you for coming today. Please come back. The October 8th, 2020 meeting of the Rotary Club of San Marino is adjourned. Thank you.
Thanks. Bye. Bye. All your extra time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Erin, can you stay on for a sec? Yeah. yeah. One second.